Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, I am covering a topic I've covered redundantly on my channel, but I consistently keep getting questions on it. And for those new guys out there just assembling your spindle cable, this is a video you certainly don't want to miss. I went through, I put text in it, it's got background music to make it a little more interesting. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're just learning how to assemble these cables, once again, you're going to pick up a lot of quick tips. Now I didn't cover soldering in this video because I've covered it in many other past videos on my channel. So just do a search on my YouTube channel if that's something you're interested in seeing however if you want to see how I work with the connectors how I formulate my boot how I cover the opposite end of the cable that's for VFD integration with the ring connectors this is your video once again it's short but it's right to the point and I want to thank everybody for their prayers Joanna is healing nicely let's jump right in all right, so just a brief introduction. I'm covering here the description of the large HY connector. Now, at the time this video was produced, it was actually a newer connector that HY had come out with. Now, many of you realize that it's been on the market for some time. Many of you now are receiving your spindles with this connector. As far as the units, you can see here that I use solder and flux. I actually use Kester 186 flux on these with solder on your 16-4 double shielded oh, cables. So. Uh, um, the only thing you have to be concerned with is the green lead. The green lead has to go to pin four. So once again, green lead, pin four on this end. I'm gonna do another video showing you the other end so that uh, it will interface with the VFD. But you can see on this end how this is done. I'm now gonna assemble this and I will show you in the video exactly how the assembly process is and what I'm using to assemble these. So now what I'm going to do, bring over the threaded adapter piece. This comes up. And then I bring over my insulation. Now this is double wall heat shrink and I cut this naturally so that it insulates everything completely because this is a three phase cable and for all safety intensive purposes, this must be done this way. So again, now this, this double wall heat shrink does incorporate the adhesive for moisture seal. And I would prefer you to use that. You can see the adhesive coming out as I shrink. The reason I use double wool, of course, is for safety, and on top of that, um, it's a much stiffer performing heat shrink. Okay. Now I'm gonna cut the video here, and I'm gonna show you the final assembly, which will be me installing the back end casing of the actual connector. Thank you. Okay, this is the final assembly stage on this end of the cable. You can see I've, I've screwed on the back end of the connector and it just naturally screws on. There's a set screw here that holds it. Now I'm taking another double wall piece of heat shrink and I slide it all the way up inside. Uh, the same type of heat shrink, double wall. This piece is 175 millimeters in length. Once again, we're using double wall here to strengthen this end of the cable so that when it engages the spindle, this makes everything a little more rigid. Once again, it does have In this video, I'm going to be covering a question that comes up probably three to six times a week. Um, I just got done with this client's spindle cable, and the question that comes up most is, how do you build your stress release for your cables? I prefer to have a what looks like a molded on stress relief. A lot of guys don't know how to attain this. What you see here on this client's cable, which I just got done with 20 foot DS flexion, he's got the large HY connector. We've got a piece of double wall heat shrink. You can see the seam right here that comes all the way up, gets inserted inside the connector and then is shrunk. And then over that comes another piece of double wall heat shrink, the same diameter and it laminates it and then is shrunk. Why do I do that? I get asked that all the time. This is extremely durable. Case in point, this silicone boot 
usually comes installed inside a large HY connector. Many of you have seen this. This is the new thing that's coming from overseas that we see being done. Why are they doing this? This is not at all adequate for stress relief. It's much too soft. And I'm gonna tell you why they are doing it is because they feel that many of you may not have experience building cables. So what ends up happening is a guy cuts the cable all the way back and he has all of his leads coming back into this portion of the silicone boot and this is supposed to act as an insulator along with the stress relief. Guys, this is completely inadequate, okay? Double wall heat shrink. This is my double wall heat shrink. This is what comes with all of my spindle cable kits. First of all, it has adhesive inside which prevents moisture and it also bonds when actually heat is provided and this is shrunk. What does that mean? Well, that means when you take your cable and you insert this, okay, it's gonna lock it in place once it's shrunk, okay? The other thing is, is that once you shrink this, naturally its diameter is going to shrink. Here's another piece of double wall heat shrink. Once this diameter is shrunk, you can sl simply slide it as a sleeve, the larger piece, over it and create your stress relief. So again, these are things to really keep in mind about what you're actually working with. Now you can see the thickness of this. And I'm gonna show you the thickness of this compared to single wall heat shrink. And if you look, look at how thin this is. Now this does not have adhesive. It's not required to. This is double wall. And many of you, when you've never felt double wall heat shrink, you realize really quick, this is some very, very strong stuff. Um, when you double it, it's ridiculously strong. And I mean, uh, to the point, like I said, it becomes more like a plastic. This is super strong on this end. Now. Um, everything there is set. Once that's done, center everything, make sure you're straight, lay this over, and now what we're going to do is put our joining piece, and we are set. So none of this has to be sourced. It's all integrated with the connector. I'm sure you're familiar with these. Now, make sure we're nice and straight. As the uh, temperature drops on the heat shrink, that's when it's actually getting hard naturally. process that we definitely want to watch. All we're doing is tightening down our stress relief. It was made, and I come over here and I look at the stress relief if it's on an angle. I'll just pry it over so that it is straight and presentable. That's a done cable, and that's that end of the cable. And this is the opposite end of the cable, and you can see I've got ring connectors here. These are four millimeter ring connectors, okay? Now you can see we've got our leads coming out, okay? 
Um, the heat shrink that's going to formulate a boot, I'm going to show you that, is 150 millimeters in length, and this is single wall heat shrink, so nothing special here. What I wanted to show you is, on the ground lead, the green lead coming out of the cable, you can see I tack welded, using uh, once again Kester 186 Southern Flux, a, another silicone 18 gauge lead coming over so I can attach it to my shield drain, okay? This lead is the only one different out of the group, okay? The other remaining leads are singly socked. Nothing big here, very simple. Once again, they all use the four millimeter ring connectors. This is the final assembly of the cable. Um, this is the opposite end. You can see we have our three leads here. These are our power leads, the white, the red, the black. The green, once again, is isolated for ground. You can see the shield drain has been attached. Everything has been heat shrink nice and clean. Now I'm gonna make the boot. Just slide this up and we want to leave I'm gonna guess we want to leave about that much I can do a measurement and give you an exact measurement but this is what I've always stayed with again we want to leave just a terminal so they're flexible for the end user and what I do is I just come over here and I'll press on the cable you guys I'm sure know how to do this press on the cable and see where the indent is where the cable ends now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and stay well beneath that is the cable all done on this end. And this completes the tutorial. You can see our ring connectors here. Uh, the length here I measured is 45 millimeters of actual lead exposed. And you can see here, the reason we're doing that is so we have a nice availability for flexibility for our client. You can see here, this boot is not fully shrunk. It's actually just beneath the actual uh, cable end. And that makes it so this is flexible as well. And then this is all heat trunk, and we just try to keep everything nice and symmetrical so it looks nice and neat. So again, you can see here how the cable came out. We've got our two green leads, which are one, uh, the silicone lead is for our shield drain. The other green lead comes from the cable itself, and these three are for power, because this is a three-phase power cable. Okay? So